Hello everyone, this is Bob and Threadbear, and welcome back to Threadbear Reviews. Today will be the last review that ties into Psychonauts, and it's the request of patron SCR Dest. Specifically, the request was for the 2001 film K-Pax, but after I did some research, I decided it might be better to go with the 1986 Argentinian film Man Facing Southeast. K-Pax was evidently an uncredited remake, with a worse reception and Kevin Spacey in the lead role. So overall, the original film seems like a better pick. So, let's get into it. The story about the story. Man Facing Southeast, or Hombre Mirando al Sudeste in original Spanish, was both written and directed by Elicio Subiela, a rather well-known Argentinian director who started his career in 1963. He made a good couple dozen films throughout his career, and notably, they all seem to have been his own original scripts. For the most part, they also stick to the magical realism genre, which is what you call works that have a minor supernatural or science fiction element, but are otherwise, for the most part, realistic. Today's film is no exception, so you'll see what I mean soon enough. Like most of Subiela's films, Man Facing Southeast first got released on the film festival circuit specifically the Toronto Film Festival of 1986. It got a cinematic release in Argentina the next year, along with a limited subtitled release in the United States, and while it enjoyed a modest success of $1.5 million on a $600,000 budget, it only really found an audience after it came out on video. This was the time when home video and video rental stores were really taking off, after all. It also got suggested as a possible nominee for the Academy Awards Best Foreign Film that year, but it didn't get the nod. American film critics remembered Man Facing Southeast again in 2001 when K-Pax came out and had a striking resemblance to the Argentinian film, but didn't give it any credit. The writer of K-Pax claimed to be completely unfamiliar with Man Facing Southeast, but Subiela sued him and Universal Pictures for plagiarism within a month of the film's release. Unfortunately, we'll never know the full truth of the story, since Subiela had to drop the case because he ran out of money. Well, let's set aside the American film for now and concentrate on today's topic. The Review Dr. Julio Denise is a psychiatrist at the overcrowded and underfunded psychiatric hospital in Buenos Aires. He's a divorced father of two who has lost all of his passion for his life and his work, but one day, his ward unexpectedly has an extra member. The new man plays the organ like a master and calls himself Ramtes, and he claims to be a biological projection from an alien ship orbiting Earth. At first, Denis figures that Ramtes is a fugitive faking insanity to hide from the cops, but when they fingerprint him, they discover no record. Of course, that could just mean that he's a refugee from a neighboring country. Still, there are things about Rontes that don't add up. He spends hours each day facing southeast without blinking, supposedly to receive and transmit information, and he clearly has psychokinetic powers which he uses to come and go from the asylum at will. He also gathers a large following among the other patients, and he claims that his goal on Earth is to rescue people from misery and cruelty. One day, Rontes gets a visit from a woman named Beatrice, whom he calls the Saint. She claims to have met him during a charity mission in which they both help the poor in one of Buenos Aires' slums, and Denise tries to get her to help him learn more about who Rontes really is. Later on, Denise takes Rontes to an outdoor concert playing Beethoven's Ninth Symphony, and Rontes disrupts the concert by taking over as the conductor during the last part of the Ode to Joy. Simultaneously, the patients of the asylum start a jubilant riot back at the hospital. The hospital director is angered by the bad press, and so he demands that Dr. Dennis inject Rontes with the antipsychotic drug he had up till now avoided taking. As a result, Rontes goes fully catatonic. Meanwhile, Denise has sex with Beatriz, but then she tells him that she's also a biological projection, just like Rontes and she wants him to help her sibling. Enraged, Denise throws her out, but as he does so, he finds an old photo of Rantes and Beatriz standing together. Rantes then gets electroshock therapy in an attempt to snap him out of his catatonia, but the treatment gives him a heart attack, and he dies. The other patients are left waiting for a spaceship to come pick them up, and Denise is left hoping that Beatriz will someday return. The End 
This was a great movie. Every shot is carefully framed and blocked, and that's not something I notice about every film I watch. The music combines postmodern synth for Ramtez moments, a soulful saxophone for Denise moments, and a couple of classical pieces that basically represent the point where aliens and humans have common ground. The dialogue, particularly what Rantes says, isn't always coherent, but it's always thought-provoking. Rantes generally avoids small talk and focuses on asking meaningful questions about life and the human condition, and a lot of it seems to be the director speaking to the audience rather than the characters speaking to each other. In most cases, that sort of thing comes off as pretentious, but in this film, I think Subiela pulled it off. I also like the casting for this movie. The man playing Rantes, Hugo Soto, has an intense stare and puts in a great understated performance. And Lorenzo Quinteros as Dr. Denise really seems like a psychiatrist at the end of his rope. My one big complaint about the acting is that Denise and Beatriz don't really have much chemistry together, and I'm not sure if that was intentional or not. The last thing I'll say is that the movie is very ambiguous as to whether Rantes is what he says he is, or whether he's a deluded human and Beatriz is either equally deluded or somehow enabling Rantes. He is psychokinetic, that much is provably true, but maybe that just means that humans can be psychic. Some would say the ambiguity is frustrating, but I think it's to the film's credit. The whole thing is about asking questions and letting the audience make up their minds, and so it's good that the premise is no exception. The Analysis Man Facing Southeast is a Christ allegory. He doesn't even try to be subtle about it. It comes right out and says that Rantes is Christ and Denise is Pontius Pilate, the man who washed his hands but still condemned Jesus to death. Their relationship is different than how it is in the Bible, but much like Jesus, Rantes calls out the terrible ways that people treat the sick and the poor. He describes helping people as being the most logical course of action, and true insanity is to ignore people's suffering even when you see it in front of you. And then, just like Jesus, Rantes is tortured and killed for disrupting the status quo, even though he never harms a fly. Heck, the last words out of his mouth are, Doctor, why have you forsaken me? But there's more to the movie than just the passion of the Christ. The film spends a lot of time pointing out the terrible conditions that the mentally ill had to live in during this time in Argentina. Dr. Denise has 33 patients to keep track of. Half the windows are shattered. The food is almost inedible. Dead patients are automatically handed over to medical students for dissections, and they don't even have enough coffins for everyone, and so they have to load two bodies into each one. And all of this seems to be less about curing the sick and more about keeping the mentally ill out of sight, because the cure rate is apparently 1 in 15,000. Most of the patients aren't even a danger to themselves or others. They just have a hard time taking care of themselves. At the same time, the people at the top like to appear as if they care and they want to help, but then they don't actually do anything to improve the situation. The hospital director says he cares, but the only times he acts are when Rantes embarrasses him, and the only thing he does is punish him. Then in the middle, you have people like Denise. People who want to improve the world, but can't because the system is broken and the people in charge don't want to change the system. So they burn out. They accept that the world will be a miserable place forever, and so trying to fight for a better tomorrow is pointless. Uh, I honestly don't know how much of this political commentary I'm reading into the film because of the time and place I'm writing it in, but I will say it's obvious that Subiela wasn't a fan of the Argentinian government in the 80s. When the director questions whether Rantes would have ordered a military strike if he had seen a military parade, Denise says the government had already done worse, a reference to the Falklands War of 1982. Anyway, whether it's Christ coming down from on high, an alien telling humans how to live, or just another downtrodden soul speaking the truth because he's got nothing left to lose, this is a movie about remembering to care about your fellow human beings. It may be hard, it may not amount to much, and it may seem hopeless, but helping people who need help is really the most logical thing you can do. Thanks for joining me again for today's Threadbare Review, and I hope I'll see you next time. Until then, please remember to like, share, and subscribe, and if you have a little extra money to spare, you can support me on Patreon. Link in the description.